This is a Squire Jaguar. Jaguar? Jaguar. 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 And this is a Jaguar Bridge. It's a fucking piece of engineering art. There, I said it. But the Jaguar Bridge sucks! Well, you suck even worse. Leo Fender was not a guitarist, he was an engineer. Well, actually he was an accounting major, but he was sort of a self-made engineer slash inventor slash sort of a fucking genius. And as such, he designed this thing with a goal in mind, or several actually, as you'd expect from any reputable designer. There was a purpose behind this thing. The offset bridge addresses and solves a bunch of issues from previous designs. It provides unprecedented three-axis saddle adjustment plus string height adjustment as a group. It allows some incredible tuning stability. Especially for a floating bridge! And it's also an amazingly stable vibrato design that always goes back to the neutral point. I mean, the pattern itself begins by mentioning common issues being considered, like friction points on floating bridges, tuning issues when breaking strings, jaguar, vertical movements of saddles on vibrato action, having to access weird places to adjust bridge tension, the possibility of blocking a bridge, which for some fucked up reason seems to have been taken away from me, a bar that stays in place, unlike that of a strat. Yada yada fucking yada. Dude, there's even an inertia plate. Like, the dude takes his time to make it clear that he's working on some serious shit in there. But he can do chicken picking! Then buy a fucking tally! But it won't sustain for weeks! Then buy a fucking Les Paul! But it won't be a strat! Well, go fuck yourself. You can't ask a Gibson L5 to do death metal either, but that doesn't stop it from doing everything else that it can do. What about the rattling? First off, what exactly is rattling? Do you even know how to properly set it up? Well, Apparently, Mr. Fender knew as musicians can be such whiny cunts, he actually took the time to write an entire section on the pattern itself called Method of Tuning and Operation, an entire guide dedicated to let us lazy, ignorant, complaining about everything assholes know how to make this damn thing work. Strings to pitch, bridge to height, saddles just above the bar, Enough to clear the back, but not too much so they don't tip over. Yes, he even thought of that and wrote it down. Relief and action as you would on any other guitar. Then choose a groove for each string on its saddle so that you can align them precisely where you want them to be. Intonate, as usual. Hell, he even reminds you to have the posts aligned coaxially with the thimbles inside the body. Can you fuck it up? Yes, you can. You can load the bridge. The friction of the strings upon the barrels and causes the barrels to move with the strings instead of sliding relative thirty, which is apparently word and something about pivoting and rocking. But you know better than Mr. Fender, don't you? You, my friend, can cover the bridge posts in day. We turning a perfectly working bridge into a poorly executed big speed with our rollers. Yay! I hear you fucking do. That's half the reason you bought the damn thing in the first place. That, that would make this guitar unique and fun and besides how the fuck else are you gonna play? You know, you're right. You know, that one. Oh, oh. Yeah, that one. Yet people keep coming up with stuff to put on the back of the bridge to stop harmonics and fuck up the way the bridge works. I mean, what can you do? I don't care, I want a Mustang bridge! 
Well, congrats, you just lost radius and lateral adjustment. Well, I'll buy you a statrum then. You mean a Mustang bridge, jackass? By the way, I know that's a Corvette. Okay, what about a mastery? <sighs> Is that like a level seven sorceress on Dungeons and Dragons, you freaking fairy? Um, by the way, you just lost fine adjustability on all three axes. Truth is, the offset bridge is fine as is. It's us guitarists that are wrong. We just can't take five fucking minutes to read the damn instructions and like any other ignorant, frustrated douchebag, we get angry at what we don't understand and then proceed to throw hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of bucks at pointless gimmicks to solve an issue that wasn't even there to begin with. Like vintage, discovered in an abandoned Soviet hangar in Belarus, paper and snake oil capacitors. They sold nothing. I guess what I mean is, stay off the gear page. Just st stay off it. It's bad for you. You might have noticed the uh, taller screw here on the G-string saddle, the original one came up a long time ago, this is from another bridge. The thing is they keep rattling and they come off and you gotta keep adjusting this thing. It's a pain in the ass to keep it in working condition.